obviously adding another attacking player in Liverpool's squad, they have one of the best offensive teams in Europe. Yeah. So if you can manage to keep Firmino and add Nunes to that as well, it just gives them so many more options mm. going forward. Hello there everyone and welcome to another episode of Mitsu Podcast. Today we are joined with Football Meta to discuss everything related to Liverpool's new season. Make sure to subscribe to his channel so you don't miss out on the amazing content that he uploads and we also might upload another part on his channel. So without further ado, let's get right into this one. Okay, so let's start with the Community Shield. Did you watch it? Uh, I did. Uh, I watched the first yeah. half and then I had to go, but I've seen the highlights. Mm. It was a good game. I was surprised by the result, to be honest. What were you expecting? I just expected City to do to be more clinical in front of goal. Mm. I think Haaland had a lot of chances. Uh, I didn't expect him to miss mm. that many, especially the one in the last minute as well. I know that was just a, a consolation goal anyway, Yeah. but... It still surprised me, to be honest. Liverpool started the game very well mm -hmm. compared to City. And throughout the first half, Liverpool was on top of City, to be honest. And uh, if you noticed in the first half how City were just keeping the ball with negative possession most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I think because Liverpool played uh, more pre-season games compared to City, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, Liverpool ha have looked pretty good in pre-season, except I think it was their first game against Man United. United, yeah. But... Uh, other than that, yeah, they've looked pretty solid and they just seem to be getting better and better with each game. Mm. Yeah, I was surprised uh, Firmino as well. He played quite well. He was he seemed to be a lot more attacking than he usually is. Like I don't know, like, looking at the match, he seemed to be in the box a lot more than he would throughout last season. Mm. Like, I don't know if that's Liverpool getting ready to play with Nunes a lot more often. Mm. Uh, so they want like the team to play with a more dedicated centre-forward. Mm. Uh, but I was surprised to see how how attacking Firmino was. He's usually, he drops deep a lot more often. Uh, but he seemed to be in the box quite a lot. If we compare this with City, actually, I think mm -hmm. the problem with City in this game was that they didn't play for Haaland that much. Yeah. Because City usually plays without a striker. So I feel like all the all the all the plays are depending on De Bruyne dropping inside or like Mahrez or Grealish from the sides. Haaland was so so many times looking for a pass and they just didn't get the ball that much. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, it's like yeah, City still need to get used to playing with a, a dedicated striker again. Yeah. And I'm one, I'm wondering if it it will work because if you think Pep Guardiola when he was at Bayern Munich and when he was at Barcelona with Ibrahimovic, hmm. it didn't really work out that well for him. They, they still did very well, obviously, but not without... Yeah. Like, Ibrahimovic got dropped pretty quickly when Pep was at Barcelona. But obviously, Haaland is a, too big now to <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> just sit on the bench. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Do you think Firmino playing in the midfield is better with Nunes up top? Would you say they should change formation or do you think they would stick with a 4-3-3? Like a 4-2-3-1, which can be a 4-3-3, obviously, but... Firmino in the midfield and then Nunes up top. I, I thought a 4-2-3-1 would work really well for Liverpool this season as well. Hmm. The only thing is if you play with a 4-2-3-1 is you have to drop either Thiago, Fabinho or Henderson. Yeah. And all three are quite like, are crucial to the team in midfield. So I don't know who you'd have as the two pivots. So what I was thinking was, you know, Henderson is a squad player. The team needs him for, for the captaincy and everything. Mm -hmm. But against like um, top class teams, I think Henderson should play, but then mid-table or low-table teams, I think you want to create more chances because these teams always play against Liverpool with low blocks. So I, I'm thinking like Henderson can be off, can come off the bench, yeah. but start with Firmino, Nunes, Salah and Diaz, for example. So you have more, more options against a low block. Yeah, that, I think that would work really well. Uh, I think if you are obviously adding another attacking player in Liverpool's squad, they have one of the best offensive teams in Europe. Yeah. So if you can manage to keep Firmino and add Nunes to that as well, it just gives them so many more options mm. going forward. Because Jota is now injured. Yeah, yeah. How long is he out for? I can't remember. I think a month or a month and a couple of weeks. So he'll miss the yeah he'll miss the start of the season. Yeah. Obviously, having the World Cup in between the season that's gonna mess things up as well. But yeah, it turns out Salah this time has a break in the middle of the season, unlike oh, last time. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that will be good for him. <laughs> Worrying for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to talk about about the back line. Sure. So who do you think should start? They have four centre backs now. I like Van Dijk. And I do like Matip as well. 
But I think without Van Dyke, whoever you play, sorry, with Van Dyke, whoever you play next to them just looks alongside them. Al- alongside Van Dyke looks so much better. Mm. I don't mind the back part, the partnership of Van Dyke and Matip. I think that could be good coming into the season. I'm thinking like against low teams, you always see Liverpool using a high line. Mm-hmm. I think Konate is much better than Matip against those teams. That's why we saw Liverpool last year mm-hmm. just switching between Konate Van Dijk and uh, Matip Van Dijk. But uh, with Gomez now that he renewed the contract and also given the number two, I don't know if he will be playing more. Obviously, Konate got injured last game, but I think he will start the season. But uh, Klopp always seems to start with the oldest, if that makes sense. So Matip will start the season and then he starts to switch the switch the formations. Yeah, that's true. I think, yeah, uh, Klopp definitely wants more experience at the start just to like settle into the season and then go from there hmm. I think yeah you're right Konate is maybe a bit more of a reactive defender so if you play with a high line you need someone who's quick and can turn and can hmm. quickly close down the space Matip's a bit more slow a bit more calculated but he's better with building the attacks and exactly exactly and I think now that they have a target man in Nunes or at least someone who plays on the back line more constantly compared to Firmino mm. I think having Van Dijk and Matip who can pick out longer passes will definitely help them out as well because mm. they, they do build from the back a lot but Van Dijk does have an absolute cannon of a foot and he can pick out anyone a 60 meter pass very easily and Matip's quite good at that as well Liverpool is guaranteed one pass from Van Dijk every game to be honest <laughs> exactly exactly so I think yeah having better ball players might benefit them, benefit them more throughout the season I wouldn't be surprised if Konate played a lot this season yeah before we continue I wanted to remind you all that the Econo Coaches Academy now has annual subscriptions as well if you want to take your game to the next level, the coaches at the Econo Academy will serve you right. With online webinars discussing a range of different tactical topics, weekly secrets, training drills and match tactical analysis, you will notice huge improvements as a player or even as a coach. You can get the discount by using the code MITSUJR. You can find the link in the description below. Make sure you don't miss out on the offer. So for Nunes, do you think Klopp will stick to his ideas of the formation? For example, you always say he doesn't change the 4-3-3. Do you think he will keep uh, Nunes like this striker who doesn't drop uh, down or uh, get the ball from the midfield? Or do you think he will try to change his style this season and go for like more crosses inside the box? Because last season we saw so many crosses from Robertson and Trent not connecting to anyone in the box. Mm-hmm. With Nunes now, do you think uh, Klopp would change his formation his style I think he will I think Klopp's a a very good manager and he adapts well to the players that he has in the team and if he does have a player in the box who the team can aim for then that's certainly going to be something that they're going to work towards Hmm. and I think we saw it already in the community shield as well with with um, Nunes pushing on the back line it frees up more space on the edge of the box for Salah or Diaz to cut inside Hmm. but it also gives more space for Trent and for Robertson to to cross the ball into the box as well so I think having someone push the defence back as much as possible could actually benefit Liverpool quite a lot instead of having Firmino drop deep and Salah and Diaz cutting inside as well. What did you make of the transfer window so far? For Liverpool? Yeah. I was surprised with how much they paid for Nunes considering he's only had one obviously he had a very good season for Benfica and he did well against Liverpool in the Champions League as well but I didn't expect that price tag for for how old is he? 23? It seems like quite a lot but based on what we saw in the Community Shield and against Leipzig, where he scored a hat trick, I mean, obviously preseason is a completely different story. Yeah. But he seems to be fitting in well, and he's doing. I think he'll have a good season. Fabio Carvalho. A good signing as well. Uh, I don't know how much first. I, I don't know how much he'll start, just considering how much competition there is in that position. Mm. But I think he'll definitely be someone that will help the team out towards the the second half of the season or when there's key injuries he's definitely a great player to have come off of the bench I don't see him starting that much games because Liverpool usually plays with as we said Fabinho, Thiago, Anderson for example Mm -hmm. so there's no this attacking midfielder position in in the squad but again they they struggle against low and mid-table teams Mm -hmm. like uh, you see Liverpool playing very good uh, football against City, Chelsea but then again against lower teams many games ended like 1-0, 2-0 yeah exactly Um, go back to Nunes as well I think he's a player that will actually do Hmm. really well against big clubs so I think he'll do well against the top six because they play with a higher line they're a bit more aggressive in possession Hmm. but I think he might struggle against the low block as well because it's not easy to just get across into the box 
and pick out a player amongst five or six defenders. So I think with open space, with space to run into, Nunes could be deadly. But against the low block, I'm not sure if he's going to be as effective as Liverpool maybe hope. So for the possible lineup, what do you think? Uh, obviously, Alisson in goal. Yeah. Uh, and then back four, I'd go Trent, Matip, Van Dijk and Robertson. Mm. Uh, I'd keep it quite similar to this season, yeah. to be honest. I, I do like the idea of a 4-2-3-1 that you mentioned earlier. I don't know if, if Klopp is... I don't think he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... It's just too offensive, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Midfield, Henderson, Fabinho and Thiago. I think have just been so solid. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Cater could be a good hmm. option from the bench, but just these three, they just seem to work so well together. Yeah. Uh, and Salah, I think Nunes will beat Firmino to the, to the, hmm. the starting lineup. And Diaz on the left. Mm. The arrival of Diaz surprised everyone. Yeah. Uh, and it was the main reason why I think Liverpool were quite happy to see Mane go. Because Diaz just had an unbelievable season last season. And I think he's just going to continue being the first choice on the left wing. How many goals do you expect him to score? I think he'll break 10 goals easily. Mm. Uh, but I think he'll provide a lot of assists as well. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets over 20 goals and assists this season. Yeah. Who will be the top scorer this year? Uh, in general or Liverpool? In general. I don't want to say Salah because it, it just seems boring to say Salah at least yeah but he's just he's just too good he's just so much fun to watch I think it's either between Salah I don't think Haaland or Nunes will be mm. ready to compete with top scorer just yet I think Kane Kane will be back I think it's between Salah and Kane again mm. this season because Conte had so much time in the preseason to prepare and he bought the signings he want also exactly yeah they had a, a very good transfer window I, one of my next videos is going to be on Tottenham because mm. yeah I think they're going to surprise a lot of people this season yeah. I know it's Tottenham they're a bit of a, a banter club at times but yeah. Conte is definitely not a banter manager <laughs> and mm. he's yeah he's one of my favourites so what trophies do you think Liverpool will end up with yeah like we said I think they're going to win the league mm. uh, I'm not sure about Champions Champions League just because the Champions League is so difficult to call I don't think anyone would have predicted Real Madrid win it last season exactly. so yeah. I don't think they'll win the Champions League but that's just because if you're going all the way in the Premier League it just it makes it harder to reach the Champions League final I mean I know they did last season yeah I think yeah Premier League and either the FA Cup or, or Carabao they might be they might do the double so improve on last season mm. uh, with the Premier League and uh, a domestic cup but I'm not sure if they'll do more than that what do you think? The thing is with uh, Carabao Cup or the FA Cup, Jurgen Klopp doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So he always doesn't start the uh, games with like the starting 11. Like last season, the youth players won so many games that he had to start their good players for, for the final sections of the <laughs> Cups. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yes. But yeah, I think Premier League and then I would say reach the semi-finals, finals of the Champions League. And uh, yeah, FA, he, he, he concentrates more on the FA Cup compared to the Carabao. I mean, everyone does. Yeah, yeah, for sure, so, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Carabao, is, it's it's nice to have. It's nice to have like a trophy in, in February to, hmm. to get excited. But obviously the FA Cup is, is so much more important. There's so much more history. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Let me know how many goals do you think Darwin Nunes will end the season with. And also make sure to let me know which team do you like to see next in the comments down below. As I said in the intro, subscribe to Football Meta so you don't miss out on the amazing content on his channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.